No, 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 guys, you never boil the panna cotta. You never, never, never boil the panna cotta. Transfer your sour cream to a medium bowl. Sour cream? Excuse me, did you say sour cream? Squeeze out the soaked gelatin leaves and stir into the hot cream until completely dissolved. Fantastic, Gordon, fantastic. This is what we want, yes. Hi, and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook delicious Italian recipes in your own kitchen, and also where we react to bad and good Italian recipes. Today, we are reacting to the panna cotta. Panna cotta is the easiest and the most loved Italian dessert around the planet, together with tiramisu. It is so easy, so you can't really make mistakes, can you? Mm. Let's watch these videos and find out. The first video we are reacting to today is from All Recipes. It's a very popular channel. It's been around for a long time. Lots of recipes on their website. Can they make panna cotta? Let's see. The All Recipes member who shares this dessert recipe for panna cotta says, this is a traditional, easy, and delicious Italian custard. Looks fantastic. Another All Recipes member describes it as simply delicious, easy to make, smooth, and creamy. This is a dessert you could do a lot with. Just I agree, it's so beautiful. Panna cotta is so easy, but that's why people love simplicity. Keep it simple, you never go wrong. Start, pour a third of a cup of skim milk into a small bowl. Milk? Why do you use milk? Why do you use milk? Panna cotta in Italian means cooked cream. There is no milk involved, okay? It's like if you are making a brisket, and you are adding pecorino cheese on the brisket or mozzarella cheese to melt it. Do you do that? You don't do that. Add a quarter ounce envelope of unflavored gelatin. Stir the gelatin is good. I just recommend you, instead of using powdered gelatin, just use the gelatin leaves. You can find it anywhere, in any shop. Gelatin leaves is the best one. You just make sure you put it in the water so it, it, it becomes nice and soft and then you squeeze the water out together and set it aside for now. Then, in a medium saucepan over medium heat, add two and a half cups of heavy cream. Yeah, that's all you need. Heavy cream is all you need. And half a cup of sugar. Sugar gives the flavor to the cream. It's so important. Stir the mixture constantly until it comes to a full boil. Carefully watch the cream because it quickly rises to the top of the pan as it comes to a boil. No, 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 guys, you never boil the panna cotta. You never, never, never boil the panna cotta. You gently cook the panna cotta, and when you see the bubbles on the side, when it starts creating the little bubbles, it means it is ready. You just want to heat it up. You do not want to boil the cream. You just want to slightly, slightly cook. Now, pour the gelatin mixture into the cream and stir until the gelatin is dissolved. Cook for a minute, stirring constantly. That cream is suffering right now. Look how much is boiling. It's boiling way too much. No, 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 guys. You cannot, you cannot make, you cannot make panna cotta with boiled cream. You cannot. Then take the mixture off the heat. Add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Beautiful. I love vanilla extract. It's my favorite. And stir it all together. Pour the mixture into six individual ramekin dishes. So she can create the shape of the panna cotta and then eventually she will put the panna cotta in the plate. Let me tell you, it's more difficult. The easiest way is just to make panna cotta in a glass. This is more difficult, so well done. Cool the ramekins uncovered at room temperature. When they're completely cooled, cover them with plastic wrap and refrigerate them for at least four hours, but preferably overnight. Okay, I've never done that. I never let it cool down, so I always straight away cover my panna cotta straight in the fridge. Straight in the fridge. Free! And for four hours minimum, but I agree with the lady. Overnight is a lot better. You can either serve the panna cotta in the ramekins or unmold them by dipping the ramekins in a bowl of warm water for a few seconds, running a thin knife around the edge and turning them upside down onto a plate. The panna cotta can be enjoyed as is, 
or served with fresh berries or topped with a drip. Panna cotta to me doesn't look set. As you can see, it's like floppy. Maybe she didn't wait to didn't wait four hours. She waited less. It's a video. It can happen. Maybe you waited less. Uh, or maybe it could be the milk because it looks like there is milk on the side. You know, you don't know, don't, don't put milk, please. Do not put milk in your panna cotta. The next video we are reacting to is from a channel I really love. She's incredible, Natasha. She's got a really beautiful, successful channel, a beautiful family, and she's so funny. I want to react to the video because she has very popular recipes. Lots of them are Italians. Let's see. Hey everyone, it's Natasha of natashaskitchen.com. Natasha. Today I'm going to share with you how to make panna cotta. It's an Italian dessert. It sounds complicated, but it's so easy. And I like your pronunciation. Panna cotta. Brava, brava. Let's see if she can make it, okay? Let's watch it together. Looks pretty good to me. First things first, put one cup of whole milk into a medium saucepan. Another one. Why you put milk? Is that an American thing? Why did the panna cotta coming from Italy all the way to America change so much? Panna cotta is just cream. You guys love cream in America. You don't need milk. Why do you have to add the milk? Milk doesn't add any extra flavors. Sprinkle the top with one packet of unflavored gelatin. You're gonna let that sit for a few minutes until that gelatin softens. Just don't use this gelatin power powder. Okay, you can, but use the leaves, please. I can't stress this enough. It's better. Now we're gonna put that over medium low heat and stir it until the gelatin dissolves completely and your mixture is steaming. Make sure you don't boil the milk. Add in two cups of heavy whipping cream, half a cup plus a tablespoon of sugar, a splash of vanilla, and a pinch of salt. Well, okay. Okay, let's go back to that. So she said, put cream. Okay, so it looks like she had, she's using more milk than cream, by the way. Then she said to put sugar, which is great. Vanilla, great. And then salt. What is the salt for? It's not a cake. You don't need salt. There's no flour involved. You don't need salt. You don't need salt. Who told you to use salt, Natasha? Keep stirring, stirring, stirring until it's steaming again and then take it off the heat. You're gonna let that cool for about- She's so lovely, you know, that beautiful smile, you know. It's... Can't say anything wrong to this girl. Transfer your sour cream to a medium bowl. Sour cream? Excuse me, did you say sour cream? This is a panna cotta. Are you, are you using sour cream? Are you making- What are you making? using one with a pouring lip. It makes it so much easier to serve. Now gradually add your warm cream while whisking. No, 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 guys. Sorry. Sorry, I Natasha. Really? That if you let it rest for a okay, Natasha. There is nothing wrong with presentation. Everything looks beautiful in the presentation, but everything is wrong inside that white cream. What you've done with the sour cream, you completely destroyed the panna cotta. Completely. Look how beautiful it looks. That panna cotta looks so beautiful, but I don't want to eat it because I know what's inside. Please do not do that. Please do not put sour cream, guys. Please do not. Do not use milk, okay? i show you how to make panna cotta. Just go on my channel and you can learn how to make a beautiful, easy panna cotta done in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. The next video we are reacting to is my one of my best friends, Gordon Ramsay. Oh yeah, he loves me so much. And we're going to react to his espresso panna cotta. Let's see if he can do it. I'm making one of my absolute favorite Italian desserts, panna cotta, with that quintessentially Italian flavoring, espresso. Good pronunciation. Espresso panna cotta. He knows how to say it. Well done. Start by immersing two leaves of gelatin in cold water and leave to soak. Gelatin, that's the one you have to use. The gelatin leaves is what you need to use. It's a lot better than powder. Into a small saucepan, add caster sugar, cream, milk, sugar. Why do you put milk, Gordon? You did so good. Caster sugar, cream, espresso. Why do you need to add milk? It's especially now that you're adding the espresso, it's so runny. You don't want to add uh, milk at the same time. Why? You have to use a lot of gelatin if you use milk. Don't use the gelatin part. And a shot of good, strong coffee. Gently bring to a simmer and remove from the hob. Well done. Bring to simmer. You do not boil the panna cotta. Gordon is doing a very good job here. Bring to simmer. Apart from the milk, why, why do you use the milk, Gordon? This is great. 
Squeeze out the soaked gelatin leaves and stir into the hot cream until completely dissolved. Fantastic, Gordon. Fantastic. This is what we want. Yes. Pour your cream mixture into a jug and fill your molds just short of the rim. Rinsing your molds in cold water before filling will make it easier to get your panna cotta out once it's set. That's a real professional chef. That's what you do. You put them in a, let's say, a tray or dish uh, with water. So you merge in there and yeah, the, the, the mixture is not gonna get stuck to your ramekin. Leave in the fridge for at least two to three hours or overnight. Perfect, overnight is always best. I have to say, yes, I always say four hours. That's what I say in my videos. But if you say two hours, yes, it can work within two hours. It's just best not to rush this dessert. You know, that's why we say four hours overnight is best. But if you really need to rush it, you can make it in 10 minutes. Let's say you have dinner at eight o'clock, you make it at six o'clock, you will be fine. To make your cinnamon hazelnut brittle, pour caster sugar into a pan and cook over medium heat. This sounds fantastic. Gordon, you're the really... The sugar melts to a deep golden brown. Pretty surprising me. Gordon, you're amazing and now. Well done. Scatter toasted hazelnuts into the caramel. Beautiful. Dust with ground cinnamon and leave to set at room temperature. Wow. When your panna cotta is firm, giving each mold a quick dip into boiling water should ensure a perfect stress-free exit onto the plate. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Dressed with a shard of crunchy hazelnut brittle, nothing could be so deliciously elegant. Beautiful, he is very elegant, guys. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, Gordon, well done. Well done, Gordon. Very, very, very elegant. Well done, Gordon. You really impressed everyone. Well done. Well done. Come and watch the panna cotta on my channel and I'll show you how the panna cotta should look like. Panna cotta moves like this. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Um, what can I say? We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Play video recipe or maybe reaction video. In the meantime, I'm eating some arancini because I'm starving and I've got spinach ricotta arancini and maybe soon I'm gonna have a panna cotta. Mm. Guys, I've got the panna cotta recipe on my channel. Please go and watch it. This panna cotta is beautiful, made in a glass, looks sexy. Learn how to make it with me. Come on guys, it's beautiful and you deserve to try this panna cotta with no milk. Oh yeah, there's no milk in there. No, no. Thank you so much for watching. Mm. Mmm, make the arancini. I've got the video on my channel. Mmm. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's plate.